Recorded live at Tox and Tasting Studios, it's the Clerical Errors Podcast. The podcast that shows you what's behind the collar. Let's go. From the Tox and Tasting Studios, this is the Clerical Errors Podcast. The podcast that shows you what's behind the collar. This is Bullhagen. This is Vicker. And Peter's here. Hey, Pete. So today's a big day. Yeah, I've been hearing. Today's yeah. a big day. Well, it's actually a big week. Okay. Okay. So today is a big day because today is uh, the recording day, not the publishing day of this okay. uh, podcast. Today being June 21st. June 21st 2023. is the 25th anniversary of my ordination. Oh, holy smokes. Wow. Yeah. So that's Congratulations. that's pretty cool. Yeah. That's like a long time ago, 25 yeah. years ago. Yeah, so just wait. When you're 77, Vicar, you'll get yeah. no, wait, 78? No, 77. Don't make me a little, even a little older than I have to be. Well, you still got a year before you're a day. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay, you did the math right. I do. <laughs> I'll be 78. <laughs> yep, you're right. <laughs> but you'll get there. Well, I'll I, get there. Assuming you pass Vicarage. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. If I have to do Vicarage twice, I'll you know, be even older, I suppose. <laughs> um, and, uh, and so another big thing this week there's three big things on Sunday. Okay. All right. As we, the, the day this episode right. comes out. Today, yes. The, the day of episode. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, one is uh, 18.0, his ordination in installation. Oh, okay. Uh, in Nunica, Michigan. So right on. the, the pa- podcast listeners certainly know who we're talking about, right? Yeah. He was on the podcast for a year. Yep. And I know him. And then uh, also in in Latimer, uh, uh, a new pastor is being ordained, a good friend of our associate producer, oh, Hannah. Oh, that's nice. In Latimer, where Berg once was. Yep. So uh, that's pretty exciting. Now, poor Hannah, she's coming down. She wanted to, to check out the studio again, but I'm not going to be here. Oh, yeah, that's right. You you got go to go. I'll be in Nunica. Nunica to 18.0. So, and then one more. Uh, uh, this is the day where Berg is installed in oh. Lander, Wyoming. Oh, wow. Okay. That is a lot of installing going on. Right. Yeah. So, busy, busy day. Busy. That's why he hasn't been on, is he's been kind of busy getting that all going and moving. And that makes sense. So, this is a day he is installed. Uh, there in Lander, Wyoming. I'm to- told it's very beautiful out there, which happens to be coming full circle here, right? He happens to be in now the same circuit as 15.0. Really? The OG Vicar on the podcast. Oh, my goodness. Uh, That's pretty cool. The Berg District begins. <laughs> yeah. That's right. Clerical Airs West. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Yes. So we'll have to do uh, another live show out there. We'll have to go visit him and there you go. collect yep. the whiskey tax, which I'm sure he's been holding on to right. for us. I'm not sure how well the microphones work with the altitude. <laughs> probably uh, with the you're, you're you probably know this as an engineer with uh, less of the thinner <laughs> air that the probably vibrates at a higher. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> like yeah, you see, maybe. I think I think once you get up that that high, Bullhagen, you might have to talk a little louder and make sure you're heard in the microphone. Wow. Okay. That would be a, quite the challenge. But not not now. Not now. <laughs> just when we go to Wyoming. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and you, I have a beverage here. Oh, yeah. What do you got? Uh, I uh, finally <laughs> opened that box that we got at uh, Costco. Was it Costco? Oh, Yeah. That's right, because we got those. Uh, we got those, and then the way we were recording, we couldn't drink. Right, <laughs> something about it. You're like recording while driving. Like or... when you were here for my fiftieth yeah. birthday a few weeks uh, ago. When yeah. I was there for your birthday, we went to Costco, and what did we get, Bullhagen? Uh, we got uh, a uh, special, beautiful whiskey. Oh. Do you have any more of that? No. Did you Did you get to enjoy some? I, I, yeah, I don't have any more, and I so I did. Did you get to enjoy some on on Father's Day at least? Yes. No, it was already gone. Uh, okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Probably a it little more delicious. than some. It was delicious. Uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> yes. What kind? What was it again? It was uh, the the uh, it Maker's Mark or the Maker's the Maker's Mark um, straight from the barrel or something. Right. Because hmm. oh. normally they sh- they. 
they uh, cut the the Maker's Mark with specific lake water that's near the Maker's Mark plant. Oh, that's interesting. So uh, I ha- so we got uh, some uh, just some tequila seltzers. This is a high noon lime tequila seltzer. Nice. Seems interesting to me. I wish I could be jo- enjoying it with you. <laughs> Gluten free. Well, that's important. How's it taste? Not bad. The classic Bullhagen. The classic Bullhagen. Take a sip. Hold it at arm's length and take a look. Yeah, yeah. that's. I can confirm that that is what happened. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, delicious. Not bad. It's really good. Nice. That was a lime, and I've, I've got a reload of grapefruit if I need it. So, Ooh. so Vicar, what are you preaching on? <laughs> ah, I will be preaching on the parable of the lost sheep from Luke chapter 15. Does, now, does the reading have the lost sheep and the lost coin? Or? Actually, yes, it does. Okay. In my sermon, well, oh, that's getting ahead of myself. And Vicar, I wanted to jump in too. I, I had some, I got some good comments about that last episode. Oh, good. Of the, uh, of the critiquing your sermon. Yeah. I, I got some really good comments from that. So. Well, that's cool. So. Just wanted to let you know. It was worth all the torment then in that case. <laughs> and actually, we did. Actually, we did we too. We did too. Yeah. I got good feedback from that sermon here as well. So, uh, which means I probably need to keep a recording of that particular podcast so that when I'm struggling with, oh, how should I word this? I can go listen to it <laughs> right. and get reminded. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there you go. All right. From Luke chapter 15. Now the tax collectors and sinners were all drawing near to hear Jesus. And the Pharisees and the scribes grumbled, saying, this man receives sinners and eats with them. So he told them this parable. What man of you, having a hundred sheep, if he has lost one of them, does not leave the ninety-nine in the open country and go after the one that is lost until he finds it? And when he has found it, he lays it on his shoulders, rejoicing. And when he comes home, he calls together his friends and his neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep that was lost." Just so I tell you, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over ninety-nine righteous persons who need no repentance. Or what woman, having ten silver coins, if she loses one coin, does not light a lamp and sweep the house and seek diligently until she finds it? And when she has found it, she calls together her friends and neighbors, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the coin that I had lost. Just so, I tell you, there is joy before the angels of God over one sinner who repents. <clears throat> All right, Vicar. So, yeah. uh, um, wh- what have you been working on? So, what I've been working on, uh, I guess if I could frame it up, is where are you in the parable? And I have basically three answers to it where are you because you're not a person listening is not always only one of the one of the parts of the story they're in multiple places so the most obvious one is the beautiful gospel story that that i'll say is we we are the lost lamb that was completely hopelessly lost in the wilderness dead in our sins lost in the wilderness uh with nothing but certain death coming our way, unable to feed ourselves, unable to do anything for ourselves, no way to effect our own rescue. We needed somebody to come save us. And so beautifully, the good shepherd looks for us diligently and does all of the work, goes to all the lengths to save us and bring us back home. And in that way, we see ourselves, like you can be placed into the parable as the lost sheep. And I think that's readily obvious and it's a beautiful gospel story. But where else are you in the parable? parable. You are also the friends and the neighbors that Jesus calls to celebrate. And when might that happen? I mean, a good example of that is when you are in the congregation and a baby or even adult is baptized and you rejoice, you celebrate that baptism. You are celebrating with the with the salvation of the lost sheep, with the, the person who has been baptized into the kingdom yeah, of God. Yeah, including uh, uh, celebrating with the angels and the archangels. Angels and the archangels. With at the, all the company of heaven. All the company of heaven at the Lord's Supper. Right. So if, you, if you've ever wondered, uh, where is the scriptural evidence for that preface? 
statement yeah. with angels and archangels and all the company of heaven. Well, here you go. Yeah. Rejoicing at the sinner who repents. There we go. Rejoicing and and with your friends and your neighbors and with Jesus at the altar rail, you you celebrate the, the salvation of your neighbor and the good shepherd that saved all of you. You celebrate together at the altar rail as well. So there you are at least in the parable two times over as you look at it and think about it. But then there's an interesting part of the story just before Jesus speaks the parable, of course, he talks about, who is he talking to? I'll put it that way. Who's he talking to? Well, it's the Pharisees and the scribes who are grumbling. They're not rejoicing about the sinners. They're angry about sinners. They're angry about the lost. They're angry and upset that Jesus even goes and ministers to those people. And so the question is, is like, well, where are they in the parable? And I haven't quite written that part, but my thought on it right now is they, they've excluded themselves from the parable. They refuse to see themselves as a sheep that needs to be rescued, and they refuse to rejoice when mm-hmm. the sinners are ministered to. So in a way, they're conspicuous by their absence. They have taken themselves out of the parable. But do we do that? Do you do that, listener? Well, I think, well, I think uh, so how, how is that done? In particular, the Pharisees were doing it through their own, their version of works righteousness. Right. Where yeah. it's not about repentance, it's about obedience. Right. And so when we get there... We it is us when we one way that you can diagnose works righteousness or legalism is in how you think of the lost sheep being brought in. Right. Uh, you know, uh, is it uh, kind of like when people the old thing of uh, someone begrudging a deathbed confession or something like that? Yeah. Okay, you know? that's interesting. Uh, in, in much the same way, here uh, they were not rejoicing with Jesus eating with sitters. Because uh, it's, they didn't fall in line with what they thought the actions should be, and so when they they compared themselves in their minds, uh, it was for the holy, not yeah. for the the need of forgiveness. Yeah. And so, you know, I think that is from this parable we can see one one tall tale sign of of works righteousness is a begrudging attitude for towards right. sinners hearing and receiving the gospel right and the work of the church in doing so right and i think that uh if there's if there's ever a thought that man these the the people that are poor maybe the homeless in my community there's such a drain on the time and the resources if our focus stays solely there we i think we're in danger of behaving like those pharisees uh, or maybe they don't speak the right language, and it would take a huge effort to reach out to them. Right. And, and so an example would be here in Hampton, where where our uh, our uh, uh, Hispanic population continues to grow. Yeah. Which cause may cause some friction. Yep. Um, not that I hear a lot about it, but but it could. It could. It's something to to be thinking about. Right. You know, if the if we shouldn't. We shouldn't get into the habit or maybe even an incident of begrudging the lost that need help and will take time and resources and effort um, and be very inconvenient for us. That's it. So I'm, I'm going to ask you a question now. Okay. So so you've got uh, what order of those three? And I'm going to add a fourth, by the way. Okay. <laughs> if you don't mind. No, go for it. So what order in your, in your mind do you have of going through those three different uh, okay, so as written, I start with the lost lamb, proceed to the friends and neighbors rejoicing, and then so so go they to are the, the lost lamb that they are the lost lamb that needed to be saved that were helplessly mm-hmm. in their sins, and then but they're now as uh, as the flock of Christ, they are also the friends and neighbors that rejoice, mm-hmm. and then I'm then so far as written, then I go into like, but are you ever resembling the Pharisees who have taken themselves out of the parable by their by their uh, grumbling. Okay. Yeah. I mean, there's an interesting number thing going on. There's 99 righteous people who need no repentance, and there's really no such thing as people who need no repentance. So I ponder, I don't really think those are the Pharisees, but it could be. So maybe you have an opinion on that. Is that a representation of the Pharisees in the parable, the 99 righteous people? Um, I would say in their hearing, yes. Okay. They might see themselves that way, right. right? Okay, right. But I would say too is uh, when you talk about repentance, repentance can have like two 
two kind of frames of thought. Hmm. Okay. So repentance can refer to conversion. Okay. Like a turning. Right. You know, going from impenitent, like you did with baptism, impenitent to penitent, uh, dead to alive. Yeah. Right. right. Renewed. Yeah. Yeah. And then there's also repentance of the continual aspect. Right. So, um, you know, I think it, in this case, it could be one, uh, the turning from death to life. Uh, kind of like with you get with the prodigal son. I don't want to put a whole can, but yeah, I dodged that one. <laughs> right. Um, so it could, it could mean that from that aspect. Right. Um, kind of like the lost coin where it was lost and now is found. Right. That, that would tend to mean, uh, that, uh, it is a reference to those who, who entered into, uh, the redeemed. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I see that for sure. Right. But in any case, uh, if that's the case, we are in that category and that we were dead in sin and now we are alive in Christ. Right. That's always going to be true Mm -hmm. about us. Yeah. Right. And so the more you understand that, the more you understand the Pharisees and how we answer and how we rejoice because we were one of those lost lambs and we rejoice. Yeah. So, so, uh, yes, um, um, I'm anxious to see how that flows together from one yeah. to the other. I definitely don't plan on ending on a kind of the accusation. Are you one of those Pharisees? Okay, the end. And <laughs> that's not how my sermon's going to end. But I haven't, uh, I haven't got to the. I, I like final how you part. do it because you know how I like to think out of the box a little bit. Oh yeah, I know. The that. natural progression of that would be start with, with, uh, the uh, are are you the Pharisees here? Definitely intriguing or tempting, I guess I'll say to do it that way, because it's one of the first words in the entire pericope right. is about the Pharisees. So that would be right. a tempting and then, to start. And how do you answer that? Well, you answer that with, well, you were the one of the lost sheep. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, but you did it a little differently, which is fine. I thought I'm I would to... start with like, what do, what, yeah, I'm starting with what I think the congregation will immediately see. Where are you in the in sure. the parable. And that's how I started with the lamb, because I think we we all love that. And it's true. We should all love that. And, and do you know what the, what the fourth is? Yeah, I don't. So I'm, what is the fourth? Okay. Well, I'll give you, uh, as I get uh, introspective of my Ooh. 25 years in the ministry. Yeah. Right? We are also the voice of the shepherd. I thought about that. I did. I, I'm not just saying that because it's, it is good. And I thought about it and I thought, yeah, does the congregation need to hear me talk about pastors as, as a under shepherds of Christ. And, and I can, I could go there, but I haven't. But you can, you can do it in this way. Okay. Well, Jesus is the shepherd, right? Mm-hmm. And we are the body of Christ. Right. Uh, we're all members of that. Yes. So, he, him so the like head, we are the about. hand by which yeah. he calls. So it's not, it's not just pastors. It's the, the okay. people in the pews. You know, you, a father is this voice to his children. Right. Uh, so you can talk from that vocationally in the sense of we are also the voice by which Christ speaks. We are the, yeah, the okay. love by which he goes after. That's a good point. The, the reason why like that's that. important is if, if, if there is a problem with delinquency in a congregation, some people think, well, that's the pastor. Right. He better whereas, solve that. <laughs> whereas it really is the... The whole body. The whole body. And so, um, I think that aspect is a uh, is a uh, you could bring that out too. Ed. It's not that you have to. Yeah, I'll think about it. It was uh, yeah, because I, if we if, if I like it. If, if 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 the congregation rejoices, if the people rejoice in sinners repenting, you want to be a part of that. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. And and uh, do what you can to to call people into the church, for example. Yeah. So, well, cool. So then the listener can, if they happen to hear my sermon, they could compare it to what we talked about today. Right. And, and by the way, if you wanted okay. to hear how that sermon wound up, you can go to trinityhampton.com. That's correct. Okay. <laughs> I was about to pull up. Of course my I know. <laughs> trinityhampton.com. And uh, there's a sermon you could hear what Vicar's sermon last yeah. week wound up sounding like. You sure can. Actually, the week before. Wait. <laughs>
Let's see. No, I, I it must have last been Sunday. two weeks ago by the time they're listening to this. So it would have been June eleventh. Right. Yes, June eleventh. That's right. Right. <laughs> All right. So, good discussion, Vicar. Well, good. You're well on your way. Oh, I hope so. You're a little nervous, I could tell, because I've been in and out this week. Right. Uh, and, yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> this was basically the first time. Well, we, we had a brief discussion early, and it did help me get started on the sermon, but we hadn't evaluated the manuscript right. or anything, and and so right. it's good. That, I did uh, pop my head, head in a few times. Oh, like, yeah. Yeah, you've been flying by. I've been super busy, and if I needed you hard enough, I guess, I, you know, I know your phone number. <laughs> so, um, I have a top 12 list. Excellent. Peter, play the intro. Enough nonsense. It's time for Bullhagen's Top 12. Oh, I love this music. Don't you love this music? (laughs) Pick a reading this music. Oh, it's like headbanging quality. That's right. (laughs) It's like a WWF wrestling match starting up. (laughs) So I have a top 25 or top 12 list that only that uh, is very Bullhagen-esque. Very bizarre abstract would you say yeah i think so all right so i was thinking well today obviously 25 years in the ministry right right and uh, a couple of big ordinations coming up on the 25th no 25 25 <laughs> right? Ooh, it's starting to sound like a conspiracy yeah <laughs> so I, what i have here is i have um i i sifted through now this was actually not easy work to do okay, okay? i sifted through uh Verse twenty five <laughs> in the Bible, just just no matter which chapter, no matter which book, it just verse twenty fives. For, and sometimes I had to add a few other verses so that twenty five verse made sense. Oh, okay, right. But uh, I wanted to okay, we'll pick twenty five verse twenty fives. Okay, that uh, got me to think about my last twenty five years in the ministry and things I've Goodness. learned. Did you put them in chronological order? I, I mean, uh, no. I, oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't think so. Order? Yeah, order. <laughs> I don't even have them numbered. <laughs> uh, so I have a bunch of them that I, I wound up thinking more than I did uh, listing them or ranking them. Huh. Maybe we should call every single one of them number 25. <laughs> <laughs> number 12. Uh, so my first verse 25 uh, is uh, Psalm. Oh. <laughs> That's my first mistake. What? Like in 25 what? years, you now ah, have a first mistake? My first mistake. Goodness. My number 12 is my first 20. My, uh, okay, this is an honorable mention because it isn't a verse 25. Oh. Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> honorable mention. Honorable mention. Honorable mention for This is outside the list. 25. I love that it. That isn't verse 25. Okay, right. got it. Honorable mention. This is from Psalm 25, <laughs> verse 7. <laughs> 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 and once I say it, it'll just be amazing, right? Oh, yeah. So, and that is, remember not the sins of my youth or my transgressions according to your steadfast love. Remember me for the sake of your goodness, O Lord. So. I like that you kept that one, even if it didn't quite fit the criteria, because that is a very good psalm. So why might this be introspective for me as a pastor for 25 years? Well, one is, if you've ever seen the picture of my ordination... Mm-hmm. That you would think, oh, yes, that is youth. I look like a high schooler. Yep, I saw the picture. Uh, and uh, have I made mistakes in the last 25 years? Yes, I have. And uh, and so this this verse, even though it isn't a verse 25, right, uh, reminds me of the fact that I live only by the grace of God, and that is how I do my work. By his grace. Absolutely. And I've made mistakes, but I, I forge ahead. Forge mm. ahead yep. in the gospel. That uh, um, as one who has to give an account, um, I uh, remember this verse. Because uh, it's a scary thing for any pastor to, to know that you have to give an account as a pastor. Right. It's sobering. It really is. Right. And, and uh, so we... Rejoice in the forgiveness and and that he and we ask him not to look at the sins of our youth, uh, but according to his steadfast love. Amen. So that that is outside looking in. That is honorable mention because it doesn't technically qualify. It doesn't. It is a chapter twenty five, not a verse twenty five. Maybe that'll be next week. I can do all of the best chapter. 
the best chapter 25s ever. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, number, an actual number 12. Number 12 is uh, from Psalm 136, verses 23 through 26, because uh, the verse itself doesn't make sense without the context of the other. That's many verses are like that. <laughs> so, and that says, It is he who remembered us in our low estate, for his steadfast love endures forever, and rescued us from our foes, for his steadfast love endures forever, who gives food to all flesh, for his steadfast love endures forever. Give thanks to the God of heaven, for his uh, steadfast love endures forever. And here, uh, th- this, uh, for me as a pastor for 25 years now, uh, the, the common thread in that is the fact that the steadfast love of God uh, endures forever. And uh, in my lowest state, as a sinful human being with many foes, uh, who gives me all that I need as a pastor, uh, every, it all is led and guided by the fact that the steadfast love uh, endures forever that he gives to us. That's very good. I, I like to tell my confirmation students and my adult Bible class students that when a promise in the Bible says forever, that means it's true in heaven. And so here we read that God's love will be with us forever and ever, including in heaven. That's a very good one. Number 11. Uh, 1 Corinthians 11, 25 through 27. I mean... How can you not have, if you're talking about the work of a pastor, how can you not have these words? In the same way also he took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. We well, gotta have it. You gotta have 1 Corinthians 11, 25. So, because that is one of the hallmarks of what we do and, and uh, doing what Jesus says here, offering uh, the, the blood of the new covenant. Right, for the forgiveness of sins. For the forgiveness of sins. The very purpose of the church, and therefore pastors, to forgive sins. Number 10. And it's interesting how many of these I actually found that flows right into the work of a pastor. Yeah. It's, so this is Matthew 7, verse 25. I can almost just say Matthew 7, right? Because you obviously know it's oh, you're verse 25. <laughs> Oh, I see what you're saying. I yeah, thought you wanted me to know what it said. <laughs> no. Like, oh, no, he thinks I know it. <laughs> no, no, no. You know the number. I do know the number, right. Efficiency, uh, Vicar. You're all the... about efficiency, aren't <laughs> That's you? Right. That's right. All right. So uh, uh, number seven, Matthew 7, 25, and the rain fell and the floods came and the wind blew and beat against that house, but it did not fall because it had been founded on the rock. rock. Nice. So as I think about that aspect... Boy, in 25 years, uh, the ministry has changed quite quite a bit. What a church looks like, what we mm. deal with, uh, the discussions we have, uh, it's changed. There's a podcast now. <laughs> <laughs> quite a bit, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, there was no podcasts when I started. There wasn't an iPod when you started, I don't think so. No. <laughs> there were not MP3s until, well, maybe the very year you started, there were MP3s. Uh, I, the first three years, two years of my ministry, I didn't have a cell phone. Wow. But here, uh, the fact that with all the changes that go on and the way it all, you know, the world changes and people change, uh, Christ stays the same. That's and right. uh, all this would, without being built on the, the word of Christ, mm-hmm. um, uh, it would fall apart very quickly. Yes, it would. So that was uh, Matthew 7. Do you remember what verse that was, Vicar? Uh, let's see. That, I'm going to use my memory here. It was verse 25. All right. Actually, do you know what? This is cool. I'm gonna, I, so I have in my list, I have Matthew. That was 725. I have 625, and I have 825, all from Matthew, wow. three in a row. Better do them. So, because I have more than I have, I'm gonna add, I'm gonna add these two to that one, <laughs> so they don't right. count against the total I mean, twelve. Okay. Right. So this is still number uh, ten, right? Uh, help us out, Peter. We're on ten. <laughs> yeah, it is because I did First Corinthians and I did Psalm okay, one thirty six. Still on ten. All right. So that was th- yes. So <laughs> six twenty five uh, is therefore I tell you, do not be anxious about your life or what you will eat or what will you drink, nor about your body what you put on. Is life not more than food and the body more than clothing? So this is a reminder. Uh, pastors are given to worry. 
Yeah. That was reflected in one of our very first episodes where the top 12 ways that you can help your pastor sleep. <laughs> okay. Um, you can look that one up. It's entitled Helping Pastor Sleep. Okay. Um, and uh, this is a reminder that uh, Christ gives you all that you need, and there is life more than anything that this world can have. And uh, in the midst of it, you have that word, and you have the opportunity to give the people the word of God and give them Christ, which is that life, to relieve them of their yeah. worries. Very good. Okay? Yeah. And then uh, I'll, I'll go to 8.25, Matthew 8.25. So we've got 6.25, 7.25. Now this is 8.25, yeah. and that is... And they went and woke him, saying, Save us, Lord, we are perishing. <laughs> Do you remember the context? That's got to be out on the on the lake, the, the Sea of Galilee. Right. And uh, in the storm, of the course. The storm, and right. And, and he uh, just sleeps right through it, or at least he would have if they like, had a little bit more faith and let him sleep. <laughs> right. And uh, every pastor uh, who's been a pastor, usually usually that first year, right? Yeah. They That's how they feel. <laughs> And then in subsequent years... <laughs> Save they, us, Lord, we are perishing. <laughs> Do they switch the role in sub- subsequent years when other people are panicking and they're the calm one out of curiosity? Just... Um, I I tend to have a calming voice when talking with pastors. Okay. Very Let's good. put it that way, in vicars. Okay, I, I can agree to that. <laughs> Very good. But Dan, pastors listening have basically said this prayer many times, Save us, Lord, we are perishing. Oh, yeah. Because... You realize it doesn't take long how much, uh, how inadequate as men pastors are, and how right. how the sins are become more and more evident uh, of the congregation and the people, and hmm. and uh, you need to trust that uh, you know you don't just you're not you have Jesus in the boat with you. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> take uh, the wheel. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's pretty good. Number nine. John 17, verse... Do you remember what verse I'm going to tell you? Tell you? Uh, I think I'm going to go with verse 25. That's correct. Oh, good. Uh, o righteous Father, even though the world does not know you, I know you, and these know that you have sent me. Hmm. High priestly prayer? Mm-hmm. Nice. And Jesus, speaking of his disciples. Right. And uh, to, to be mindful as a pastor. Yes, Christ knows the Father. And... Uh, we know Christ through his word yes. and his promises. So uh, we know that the Father sent Christ, and we know that the Father sent me to be a pastor, preparing you to be a pastor. And uh, even though the world doesn't know, and the world will attack, and sins will attack, yeah, um, we know that, and, and you, you pair that with, so you know these, uh, I know you, and these know that you sent me. This is from John 17. And then later, Jesus says in John 20, as the Father sent me, even now I am sending you. So oh, yeah. so later, Jesus will actually connect this with this. Yeah. You sent me, uh, I know you, and now as the Father sent me, you, you servants of mine, uh, go with my word, I am so sending you. Yeah, that's good for pastors. Number eight, Genesis two, uh, twenty four and twenty five. Now, now I'm gonna I'm gonna say this. Um, uh, it's really twenty four that's more important than the twenty five. <laughs> well, okay, so you had to fudge a little bit. Fudge you know. a little bit, so okay. I kept twenty five in there because yeah. it's a, it's part of the same thought, I suppose. Okay, good. Okay, yeah. But but if I just read the verse, then. It'd be weird. <laughs> okay. I'll, I'll take, let's actually, it. I'm going to do that. I'm just going to read verse 25 all of by Genesis itself. 2. All by itself. All right. And the man and his wife were both naked and not ashamed. <laughs> <laughs> I actually think that you should just keep it. <laughs> Send it. Send it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for listening. Number seven. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So so the, the I added 24, obviously. Therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother and hold fast to his wife, and they shall become one flesh, okay? Uh, it is not me who... All just, I don't just remember the fact that I have been doing this 25 years. Mm-hmm. But uh, my wife also has supported me and uh, with all of this. That's right. That's very good. And I made sure today to thank her for it. Uh, 
our secretary made a wonderful post for me today on Facebook. Yes, she did. And I shared it, but I wanted to make sure Julie knew that, uh, you know, this is, you know, I'm very thankful for you and all of this because uh, she, you know, I was, I was just turned 25. Yeah. And she was 23 as a oh, pastor's goodness. wife. Yep. So uh, imagine someone that, that age uh, thrown into that. Uh, and right. growing up in a way together. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I'm not sure I could imagine it, but I, I look at the young guys at seminary and often with their young wives and, and I, and I see a level of bravery that I super admire in them. Um, it's certainly. In uh, my case, I didn't know any better. Well, right. That too. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, man, do they know what they're getting into? <laughs> Yeah. So, so this th- dad did it. I can do it too. What do you mean? <laughs> there you go. Um, but uh, so that that this what this verse particularly reminded me of in my work. What a what a blessing my my wife has been. Yeah. And uh, allowing me to focus on my work. She's not a co pastor, by the way. No. I always say when I talk about a pastor's wife, what's the most important word? Wife. Oh, okay. <laughs> right? There you go. Right. Yeah. I mean, I say Mrs. Vicker, but obviously, I just mean. Right, because after, you know, 19, we can't remember everybody's name. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> She's not co-vicker. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> what would be a, what would be a, kind of like a co-vicker? That would be almost like a, I don't know. I, I'll think of something. Right. All right. The acolyte. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, you got to do all the candles. <laughs> <laughs> and the coffee service. <laughs> I remember when I was a vicar, uh, they actually had a flow chart. Okay. Okay. Of, of a congregational organization flow chart. Like not, okay. Like it had like a, like of the, like the board, the board the top, and yeah. what they're like. So you had like a president of the congregation and the church council and elders and yeah. the kind of the committees that flow from there. And then there was pastor with the word and sacrament. And right. then like, I think the elders were kind of by there. And then at the very bottom, <laughs> it was like, like not even really on the chart. It was like vicar. Yeah, was it almost a sticky note hanging off the bottom <laughs> right. of the <your> org chart? <laughs> what we are? What are we missing? <laughs> Number seven. Oh, there's so many good, good oh, ones yeah. here. Yep. Uh, Got any more of the runs that you could like that you could put into a series? Same book, maybe. <laughs> um, I will go with. Um. Well, see, one of them I have twice here. Oh, you know, by the way, do you know what? It wasn't an one. easy task to do, by the way. Well, I can't imagine. Were you using a, like an online Bible or something like that? to? Kind of. Yeah. I was using a, a few different things. Okay. But uh, um, I'll go with uh, Romans 4, 23 through 25. But the words, uh, it was accounted to him, were not written for his own sake, but for ours also. It will be counted to us who believe in him who raised from the dead Jesus our Lord, who was delivered up for our trespasses and raised for our justification. Uh, and preaching, preaching the faith, the righteousness yeah. that we have in Christ, the power of the death and the resurrection, um, and the righteousness that it gives. That's the key theology right there. Right. Of justification. Number six. Uh, this is from John chapter 11. Okay. I'm going to add 23 through 25. All right. And Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and life. Whoever believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And, Very good. And what made me think of this, um, when I think of, okay, I'm using this to think of my 25 years, you know, is the fact that all the times, this, is, this was spoken at, at the death of Lazarus, and it made me think of all the times I use this kind of language to talk about your loved one will yeah. rise again. That's what this made me think of as I was introspective of my 25 years. I really like what Martha said there. I mean, she she had true faith and understood that he was going to be alive again on the last day. So that's really good. And Jesus, of course, pulls out a miracle and brings him back right. for more earthly life. But, but even th- as he does a miracle, it says that he wept. Yeah. So, and which is also, you know, I think about, uh, um, you know, I actually mentioned this to a family not too long ago, uh, to someone in a family at a death, you know, that, uh, you know, after 20 some years, 21 years of being here, it doesn't get 
a lot easier for the pastor, mm. you know? Yeah. Um, the fact that this has been my home for most of my, more than anywhere else in my life. Okay. Yeah. Number six. Uh, I will go with uh, Job 19, uh, verses 25 to 27, to flow off what I said last time. Okay. Uh, For I know that my Redeemer lives, and at the last he will stand upon the earth, and after my skin has been thus destroyed, yet in my flesh I shall see God, whom I shall see for myself, and my eyes shall behold, and not another, my heart faints within me. Uh, reason why what, what this makes me think of as a pastor for 25 years is all the times that uh, you deal with people who are suffering, mm. and and to to bring them the message that of knowing that their redeemer lives, and right. and the joy of being able to see that redeemer yeah. in the flesh. That's, yeah, that's uh, a good one to come right back to back with the Lazarus because really Martha said the same thing, but Job said it more poetically. Right. <laughs> He's going to, when his skin has been thus destroyed, yet will I see him in the flesh with, with his own eyes. I love it. Number five. I might have had two number sixes. Uh, <laughs> uh, I will go with. I, I, I'm sorry. I want to interrupt you. I, I, I'm fully aware that you tend to just have trouble figuring out how to count to 12. And I just leave it in. I just enjoy it. <laughs> it's really funny. Uh, the listener may or may not notice sometimes where I add the same number again, yeah. or just skip one entirely. Yeah. And uh, that through through the uh, many episodes, I just sometimes I, I call it out and say, "Hey, hey, uh, by the way, this is Peter from the future. Uh, Bullhagen missed this one, so enjoy the next one, I guess." <laughs> and sometimes I just skip it and figure that everybody else has also lost count. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I've not yet once been called out. Okay, well, well, there, our listeners are so good at emailing too. <laughs> uh, this is from Hebrews uh, ten uh, twenty four through twenty five. Let us consider how to stir one another to love and good works, not neglecting to meet together as a habit is a habit of some, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day drawing near. Very good. Is, that's. You know, we remember that we exhort to good works. Oh, yeah. We exhort to gathering together and encouraging. That was the kind of the, what my sermon on Sunday wound up being yeah, a little bit. Was, yep. Where is everyone? Right. <laughs> yeah, I told you before I preached, I kind of held back a few, a few yeah. things. And then afterwards, like we said, what do you remember you said to me? Where where oh, did you hold back? Yeah, goodness. <laughs> that's the held back version. <laughs> Holy smokes. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but, uh, that's, that's, that's up what I think of 25 years. Oh, that is, that is a constant theme. Mm-hmm. Encouraging to gather. Yeah. Encouraging to gather. That never ends. You told me something interesting about preaching to the choir, which has stuck with me since you mentioned it. You, you kind of don't like that phrase because you preached about church attendance and then there seems to be at first brush. Uh, Actually, someone said, a "Pastor, I'm shaking hands. Yeah, a kind of good sermon, but I kind of felt like you were preaching to the choir. Yeah, you're preaching to people that are there against the practice of not attending. I mean, sort of. I mean, there's more to the sermon than that, but 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 that was a big part of it. And then you pointed out though that like there, you have to preach that when people are there to hear it because uh, we're supposed to wait till they leave." And then right. preach it. Then they're not right. there to hear it, so it doesn't make any sense. <laughs> right? If you you don't you're preaching to the choir, so they remain to the choir. Yeah. <laughs> no, it was really good. It's it stuck with me ever since you said it. <laughs> you know, if we're, yeah, if I'm just preaching about those who aren't coming to church as off, as often as they should, and they're there. Well, they were. They used to be people <laughs> right. who were at church. Right. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> very good. Number four, Psalm seventy-three, verse twenty-five. Okay. Uh, whom have I in heaven but you? And there is nothing on earth that I desire besides you. Wow. Simple, short, sweet. Yeah. But well, it, sweet. But but uh, um, and and part of the, the Psalms is to remember uh, that uh, sometimes they 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 preach to how we, in faith, think of things not perfectly because we're sinners. Mm-hmm. But, uh, you know, when you talk about, for example, the joy of heaven, what is the joy of heaven? Well, this expresses it. What is there besides Christ being with God? Right. And if that is uh, the joy of heaven, 
then what do we desire here on earth more than that? Right. And relating that to, to the work of a pastor, uh, what is, is there, what greater job then is there right. than to proclaim that word and to, to be where people gather and hear that word and, and hear Christ and rejoice in his presence? Very good. That's a good one to read, well, at any time, but especially during good times so that you can re- think back on it when things seem difficult. You can remember, but still, there's nothing greater. Number four. Yeah, we just did number four. Did we? Yeah. Yeah. Number three. Number three. Then I might have to change it. <laughs> number three. Acts 17, 24, and 25. Uh, the God who made the world and everything in it, being the Lord of heaven and earth, does not live in temples made by man, nor is he served by human hands as though he needed anything, mm. since he himself gives to all mankind life and breath and everything. What what uh, I like about this when it makes me think of my work as a pastor is this. I remember that he is God. <laughs> it's not... Uh, it's a blessing to be a pastor, but it's not all up to me. Right. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I that do. That he is the God of heaven and earth, and uh, he he does his work, and, it, and he doesn't uh, allow my sinful self to, to get in the way of his work. Yeah, you're not going to thwart God. <laughs> right. Uh, but nor are you going to, like, kind of take it on yourself and, and get it done and, you know— and it's not me who gives life, it is he who gives life. Right. And so that, that reminds me to give what they need. Not my wisdom, but but the breath of God hmm. that breathes life into everything. Number three. Uh, this is from John twenty twenty five. So the other disciple told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see his hands in the mark where the nails were, and place my finger into the mark of the nails, and place my hand into his side, I will not believe. The words of Thomas. Words of Thomas, I recognize them. Okay. So what made me think of the work of the pastor in this verse 25 Mm -hmm. is the fact that uh, Thomas did not believe the witnesses that were given. The, The witnesses of the other disciples was what carried the weight even more so, because Jesus said, uh, Thomas, you believe cause, because you have seen. Blessed are those who believe who have not seen. Those who have not seen believe because of the, the witnesses. The witnesses. And, and when I think of my work as a pastor, uh, I am pointing to something that they are not going to see with their earthly eyes. Right. Um, and I don't see with my earthly eyes. Yeah. But yet... We believe in the witnesses of the resurrection, the witnesses of his death, uh, the witnesses that accompany the Holy Spirit accompanies right. to Holy do Spirit his work. Right, comes with the word of God from the witnesses that wrote it down under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. I still really do like Thomas, though. He's kind of one of my favorites because I just can I can really just sort of empathize with his position. Because uh, cause you're... Your engineer, science, yes, facts. That stuff, yep. Yep. <laughs> I'm an apologetics guy. <laughs> <laughs> Show me the evidence. There you go. All right. Number two. Uh, I will go with uh, Revelation 7, 25. Therefore, they are before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple. And he who sits on the throne will shelter them with his presence. Nice. Why, 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 that, why might that... Be may help me be mindful. I think those are the martyrs. Okay, and so they uh, they're they're comforted. They're waiting for the last day, and and they're at rest until that last day, and their earthly life is has concluded. Uh, but why would that help you as a pastor? Um, I mean, other than the general thing, I guess, like for all Christians, what a what a wonderful thing to know that, that to be absent from the body is to be present with Christ and to be at rest waiting for the last day. Uh, but you might have a different angle. I'm wondering how, how it ended up on your list. Well, <laughs> it's it's on my list because uh, um, the presence of God. 
Hmm. Okay. Uh, the uh, it's a mindful of what happens on Sunday morning. Sunday morning is a reflection of this. Before the altar of God, around the body and blood of Christ, around his word, um, and how our life on earth is a reflection in this church of that. And it also makes me mindful, just like I, I said earlier, of of the many, the I'll put it this way. Um, one thing that I think about at times as a pastor is uh, of all the, the people I've got known that I will see again. You know? Yes. How many times I have uh, uh, um, visited someone on their last day. Yeah. Um, and how many times I've said to someone, uh, uh, you know, I might say, well, I'll see you tomorrow. If not, I'll see you. Right. I will still see you again. Right. Right. You know? Uh, I, I Sometimes it's weird th- to think about, you know how, uh, like, you have big gatherings, have small gatherings? Yeah. Okay. Right? Certainly. Right? Yeah, you have a big gathering, and then you might have, like, a tent, an alumni tent or something. <laughs> I just thought you meant the cliques that people end up forming. Oh, no, I was thinking, you know, <laughs> that'd be kind of cool, you know, uh, after I'm called to glory by God's grace alone. Yeah. Of uh, meeting those folks again. Yeah. <laughs> no, I agree. Kind of like uh, I think I would be cool for, for if if there was some sort of event where all the vicars came back. That'd be yeah, really cool. that would be pretty neat. That'd be overwhelming. <laughs> now, if you need room to have more of the verses you looked up, we can make this one not official because there is no verse twenty five in Revelation chapter seven. Oh. That was verse fifteen of Revelation oh, chapter seven. So that one doesn't count. That doesn't count. You get a do over. What uh, in the world did I do? I don't know. But uh, so now you've made two mistakes in twenty five years. Uh. It's an age thing. <laughs> yeah, but how many top how many verses did you end up having though? I don't know, but he's I think he's got more to do. <laughs> All right. Uh so so that one didn't count. We're back to number 2. Number 2. <laughs> I in place of that one, uh I will say uh Mark 4:25. Okay. For to the one if you want to look up the context for me on your phone. Yeah, Mark four. Um, f- for to the one who has, more will be given, and from the one who has not, even what he has will be taken away. So, what is the context of that verse? Well, the the immediate context is he's telling them sayings about a lamp being put under a basket. Okay. But I don't know the broader context. Is that Mark 24? Mark 4, verse 25. Then it it keeps going a few verses later. If anyone has ears to hear, let them hear. Pay attention to what you hear, and with the measure you use, it will be measured to you, and still more will be be added to you. For to the one who has, more will be given, and for the one who has not, even what he has will be taken away. That's a hard saying, so let's... Okay. I I was thinking of that verse in the the context of the parable of the talents to help me understand that which is i've got the context wrong oh well there's a there's a lot of sayings in that chapter right so so parable um, of the sowers up at the beginning of the chapter in fact right where uh the talents where if you remember that where um the master leaves and one right. buries it yeah one just buries it yep. and one uses it and it's mindful what makes me think of that is when Christ died and rose, he left the church with his gifts and to use the gifts that he gave. Mm, right. Uh, his word, his absolution, his body and blood, his baptism, his word, yeah. and uh, not to sit on those, but to use those. Well, you know, burying a coin, a gift of God, not using it for the kingdom, is similar to putting a light under a basket, really. So the, mm-hmm. it actually works. The the context is so similar there. But I guess like if it has a one-to-one correlation to what you just said, I'm just thinking, I'm sorry, I'm just processing this. Like I hadn't heard that before. The, 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 the God, Jesus died, went to heaven, left the church on earth, all that, of course. And then you see the parable being about not using the gifts he gave you. Right, because to... a lot of times it's just like whatever he gives you, Whatever he gives you, use. Yeah. 
like their talents or whatever. Mm-hmm. I, I would take it to be more specific that uh, what did Christ leave? Like when he, on the last day, what's going to matter? Like if you like lifted weights, the glory of God to the best of your abilities. Okay. Well, I mean, I got that, that handled. <laughs> I mean, if you do it for the glory of God, it might matter, right. I suppose. <laughs> right. But, but what did Christ truly leave? Yeah, his word. Right. And what is it that grows? The word of God grows. What is it that... It uh, builds the kingdom. Right. Right. Believers, in other words, the church. So so that's what makes me think of that aspect of that, that parable, that it's, hmm. it's using the gifts that the master gave hmm. for us to use for the sake of the harvest and for the sake of the kingdom. I mean, I could see it almost as like a parable against the idea of cultural Christianity, that you're just a Christian because, you know, you were born in a Christian nation. Or maybe putting it back a couple thousand years, you're you're just one of the chosen people because you're a descendant of Abraham. And that maybe there's a correlation there that, oh, well, of course I've received this from my parents and my community, this this faith, this set of beliefs, right. and, and I'm going to do nothing about it whatsoever. But my understanding of that text <laughs> is using what Christ gave. There you go. Which makes me think of my work as a pastor. pastor. All right. Go. I've got... Uh, uh, three more, but I have to pick one. <laughs> and number one. Uh, John five twenty five. Okay. Truly, truly, I say to you, an hour is coming and is now here when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God and those who hear will live. Did I get that one right? I'm, Am I numbering right? I think so, <laughs> but I'm looking. That's John 5. Verse 25. Yep, that's it. You got it right. All right. Uh, putting all, all together, uh, do you notice how many of these verses, just verse, tw- of verse 25, dealt, have dealt with end times and the resurrection? Yeah. It yeah. wasn't, it's interesting, isn't it, to think about just vi- the verse 25, how so many of these things, yeah. and I've got more that I could have used. But, for example, I could have used Romans 4. Uh, I think you did. Did I? Never mind. <laughs> but you could have as well as you did. Right. Didn't realize 25 right. anniversary was the uh, was the, the time the dementia started setting in. Oh, right, geez. yeah. <laughs> Downhill. Yeah. <laughs> Downhill. Well, you know, I have been to a Bible study from a charismatic fellow, <laughs> in other words, a Pentecostal, where... It was like flopping open the Bible and just looking at verses and then putting a message together based on what random verses were looking right. at. You know, that was supposed to be a, a being led by the Holy Spirit to just sort of look up random verses. Um, we kind of, But this, this was, this, I mean, I, there's a lot of verses I didn't use. Well, I know. I know that the, I'm just, you reminded me of it. You didn't make there's me, a lot of them, yeah. Yeah, no, they, I, right. <laughs> you didn't make me think that you had done like the whole like, Psychic <laughs> you know, version. Did, did you find? Did you find a worst verse twenty-five than the naked one? <laughs> that one was pretty good. I no. came across a lot of historical ones, oh. like like genealogy. <laughs> well, oh, no, yeah, of like uh, in Genesis, a lot of them were, and then he did this. Yeah, where where uh, it didn't really apply. You know, you know, they geared more towards some and New Testament stuff because they're more general statements. Uh, clear statements rather than history. Yeah. But I could have used some more of those, I suppose. But maybe, I mean, it's a top 12 list. I should have done top 25, but... I don't think we'd have time for that. All right, Vicar, we need to move on. Oh, yeah, okay. So we can do a, me- a question, but it's got to be a quick one. All right. All right, so we are going to do a Confound the Clerics. Peter, play the intro. Confound the Clerics. Like that music, Vicar? Yeah, it's groovy. <laughs> All right. So the question, uh, we have a whole list of questions that Vicar uh, got from children. Yeah. Over and uh, I want you to pick one of the questions and answer them. Yeah. See if you have been. I think we, we teased one last week. Let's let's we pay did. off that one. Do you remember which one we, we teased? That was a TikTok one. Yeah. Are the pictures of Jesus and angels real on TikTok? 
And believe it or not, I've looked up carefully and researched that answer. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, <laughs> they are not. So, so are there? There are depictions of where people say that they have seen Jesus or on a video, and then they. I, that's a good question. I assume that they just mean in general they're seeing artistic representations of Jesus and angels. Because there could be where videos where they. You know, there's like a tree and Jesus is in the bark or a cloud where the people might see Jesus or... <laughs> or tortilla. Right, or a, a grunge uh, rocker from Seattle yeah. that kind of looks like kinda Jesus. looks like Jesus, yeah. Driving in a VW. Yeah. I remember I did that once. Remember, Peter? You, you're old enough for, where, uh, where since you're the older one, you probably remember the siblings. And I kind of joked there's a guy like in a VW van next to us at a stoplight. And uh, I, I, I was joking, that guy kind of looks like Jesus, you know? And then he pulls away, and one of the kids hear from the back, Bye bye, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> the the old uh, that guy kind of looks like Jesus joke was pretty prevalent just kind of throughout my childhood. Ah. Like like once a year or so, like, look at that guy. Oh, yeah. But, like, uh, like Pau Gasol. Yeah, yeah. What What is Jesus doing playing basketball? Right? <laughs> yeah, look, but, uh, look, look, at, look at Pau Gasol specific. sometime. <laughs> Yeah. Anyways. Yeah. It's kind of the Mediterranean look, you know. Well, good on this kid for for being on Christian TikTok. So what was your answer? <laughs> well, the answer is that the Jesus and angels are real, but the pictures on TikTok of them are not real. They're just nice pictures made by an artist. And those nice pictures help us remember that uh, about the real angels and, 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 and Jesus himself. They might remind us of so the Vicar, real person. What did Jesus really look like? What did he really look like? Well... Whatever first century Judeans looked like. <laughs> so I don't I don't know. But I mean I the artists' representations of him have been pretty strikingly similar for eighteen hundred years or whatever that there's been people making. Do you know what I've heard they can do kind of do such. now is they can take like a DNA test and kind of guess what your face looks like. Oh, okay. Well, that might be difficult to do in this case. <laughs> right. No, no, we've got plenty of icons. There's always the Shroud of Turin. Is, is that really the shroud, the cloth that covered Jesus? I mean, some think it that's is. something we need Berg for to talk about. Yeah, that's true. Because I don't know. I've said about everything I know about it, the name of it, and th- nobody knows for sure that what it is. <laughs> there we go. There's my knowledge. <laughs> All right. Uh, by the but, way, but what, so so that's is that your answer? I didn't mean to. to no, that's the whole answer so far. And uh, you know, it's it's interesting because uh, I found out that some of the children at the Christian daycare nearby uh, don't come from Christian homes, and they're. They really don't have a Sunday school background right. at all. So, uh, we're, so we're talking about you know, so someone probably seven or eight on TikTok. Yeah, that's, that's I think so. Mm. Even if it was the oldest child that I have seen over there. You want to do another one or we are very out of time. We are out of time. Out of time. Well, that gives us a bunch more. That's to do right. Later. I still got some more partying to do. So. Oh yeah. I, I might have one of my contemplative cigar walks tonight. <laughs> Thank you for listening. I'm Bullhagen. This is Vicar. And may your numbers be in order and make sense. Thank you for joining us. This podcast is available on iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, or wherever else you get your podcasts. Questions, thoughts, concerns? You can contact us on Facebook at facebook.com slash clerical heirs podcast. On Twitter at Clerical Heirs P for podcast or email us at feedback at clericalheirs.org. Thanks for listening to Clerical Heirs. See you next time.